Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Just waking up for this nice early Sunday morning. Hope everyone's having the best Sunday morning out there possible. It's another bad hair day for me, but you know what? As always, wish you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Go pray to go Jesus because it is Sunday. And let's get on over here to the live scene as Bitcoin's done absolutely nothing in the last 24 hours since we last spoke. So uh, we're going to be talking about a uh, higher time frame, longer term time frame ideas during this during this video as it is a Sunday. But first things first, we'll start with the lower time frames. Going over here to good old Bit Mexico and going on to our lower time frames we actually have technically broken this bear flag to the downside right over here but this is not necessarily the uh, a reaction that i'm looking for um this sort of slow graze at this resistance never the best sign um Sorry, at support, uh, you know, ne uh, never the best sign. When it comes to when it comes to talking about Bart's and good old Bart Simpsons, I don't think that there's like a really really accurate way of getting them. But this does feel like potential territory, especially when you spend too much time just hanging out um, after what could have been, you know, a little bit of a breakdown. So looking at this area right over here, technically speaking, as long as you're living below this guy, 36, uh, 29, 36, 30 ish area. Well, I suppose it is a breakdown. You do still have this support down around here, right around uh, 35, 69. I think, I, or at least hopefully I made that clear yesterday. That's a big one to hold up around. If you are playing this bear flag right over here, fair enough, that technically has broken. Um, but again, I'd I'd put much more importance on this uh, 3569 guy right over here. If you do break this 3569, then there is a measure move off this bear flag to be making. And uh, we've already done that because, well, it's coming down around here, right around 3450 uh, ish area. Some nice horizontal air, uh, uh, trend lines kind of meeting up with that guy. And overall, that would be in line with the measured move off this symmetrical triangle that we've been looking at right over here, uh, pointing all the way down to this 3300 ish area. So, again, all higher time frames are bearish. Um, all higher time frame oscillators are actually switching around as well though so fair enough we are getting you know quite a uh, quite a flighty response um but lower time frames right over here hourly stokes will be headed back down it looks like hourly dmi dmx dmi adx whatever the fuck uh giving you a sell signal actually right now although also giving you a little bit of divergence um but uh by the same token again this is this is clear weekend bullshit. And I think the, a really good example of it. And essentially, you know, you you know, you might move away, you might move either which way, but the range doesn't get broken. The range again being this thirty five sixty nine area, and then this guy right over here thirty six uh, seventy five, which actually hasn't been really tested even on those uh, up thrusts the last the uh, the last day. Um, Jewel completely neutral right over here, not telling you anything, and that's exactly what it should be telling you right now. This is consolidation, not really. I mean, it's it, technically it's a bearish consolidation. But as you know, with pattern traders, when it's too obvious, usually the opposite happens. Uh, two hour right over here, two hour, uh, two hour stokes actually headed up right now. We're right in the neutral zone and still below all major moving averages. In fact, the two hours been getting it really, really good because <laughs> really, really good. I think really, really well is the proper English word. But uh, as long as we're living below this 21 exponential moving average right over here, I would play the two day or sorry, not the two day, but the two hour uh, dildo death cross right over here, the green 55 and the purple 200 crossing to the downside. And you can see that price action is really having a lot of problems around here. Now I am actually flat right now because it is a weekend and uh, you know, I made that trade yesterday or sorry the, uh, on Friday, closed it yesterday. And then ever since then, I just don't, you know, I, I don't really see the need to have a position on because very rarely do things actually even happen. Um, so I just want to be I just want to be transparent with that with with what I, how I'm kind of handling that. But later tonight I will probably take that off or or, or make an amendment to it um, if we are still down around here. Uh, but anyways, two hour giving you I, I think this is the one to be playing right over here. Three hour as well a fresh death cross and these were the last two time frames that needed to be death cross before every higher time frame above an hourly is death crossed. Of course the the lower time frames they might float around all the time. I mean you, 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 like it doesn't really mean much if you get a one minute death cross right. Um, but uh, but anything above an hourly does seem to get played, and uh, and more importantly over here on the three hour, our Stokes have just crossed down, and this has had some pretty nasty implications in the past, uh, getting rejected from getting out of the bearish control zone. So to me, that is you know another thing pointing in the bearish uh, in the in the bearish way. Um, but uh, but then you know you look over here on your ADX and your ADX is still you know coming down. So to me, it's it's, it's I feel like we're gonna have to put in some time in this area. Uh, four hour right over here. Four hours interesting just because you know again we spoke about this yesterday. But it, by by doing this by having this massive dump or what kind of is a massive dump uh, a couple days ago, three days ago, whatever it might be. Um, it told it told you something by not telling you something and essentially averting what what would have been the golden cross right over here and then essentially. 
rejecting a golden cross, which essentially just means that we are confirming that we really want to be death crossed um, with the green 55 and the purple 200 just kissing right there. That is a very clear signal because it tells you that the bots and the algorithms are on the sell side of this and not wanting it in like letting it get really, really close, getting everyone all excited, lubed up, ready for the deal and then fucking, you know, get uh, get the red dildos. Darth Maul showing his face. Anyways, um, you know, just to give you an idea of what a four-hour uh, four-hour dildo Golden Cross has given in the past, uh, the last example that we actually even have of one is right over here, uh, and that was a nice ten percent move to the upside. And then again over here, which was like a thirty percent move to the upside. And I think you know it's it has some pretty good implications. So it does get played in crypto land. Uh, at, uh, after that, we have not gotten we have not gotten it. Um, it's gotten close. In fact, there was a point over here where we kind of had the same sort of thing where it kissed and then boom rejected and down and that's typically a pretty damn good signal and then over here oh man actually over here by the way it, oh, it it's really difficult to see this but yes right here kissed this is 6400 this was around the time when I actually started taking my position for the 6300 short on this guy right over here um, and it, it rejected it so same sort of idea essentially same sort of idea now it spent a lot of time going sideways after that and just sort of drooped and drooped and drooped and then drooped a little bit too much and broke that 6000 support and now we're all the way down around here here in the uh, in the mid 3000s. So again, um, by by doing that, it has actually kind of told us something and, and revealed the hand of the bigger accounts, the market movers that be, um, you know, and, and you'll see that sort of stuff go down. They'll like try to get people on the wrong side of the trade, try to jump the gun because everyone gets excited about that sort of thing or the people who are watching it get excited about it. And then other less less, less sophisticated bots will actually take that trade before, you know, be, before it actually gets fully confirmed. And then you can really get, uh, you know, fuck a lot of people, which is great for from a from a market mover perspective, you know, generating liquidity for yourself, you're gonna have all these buyers to fill all your uh, cells all the way down over here, um, as uh, everyone's trying to play Mr. Quasimodo inverted head and shoulders. So again, looking at this guy right over here, let's or sorry, let's go to a fresh chart and let's just chart this. Uh, let's just chart this one out. Um, so again, 35, we could do like 3580 uh, on a four hour dildo chart, that would be your support. And then your more preliminary resistance would be right over here, I'd say right around uh, 36, uh, 69, right over here. So a nice, a uh, little bit less than $100 range. As long as we're within this range, nothing really different has happened, but uh, this does look very droopy. It does look, like, I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, this does look like it wants to break down, um, but we will be having like our mid time frame uh, oscillators, like our eight hour, our four hour, 10 hour, starting to actually snake around Around. This one actually did just cross down again, um, but anytime you're in the more critical zone, it does, you know, it can stay down there for sure, and it will stay down there during during trending moves. Um, but overall, when we're talking about the jewel, this thing typically doesn't stay down here for too long or doesn't stay too high for too long either. So I would be at the very least, I, I want to see that oscillator kind of snap back and give a little bit of breathing room. doesn't mean that price action can't go down though. It actually can while that, while that happens. And that's the, that's the secret sauce of the jewel. Um, but over here, you can see that the 10 simple on the eight hours getting very, very dangerously close to price action, which is not good. That's not healthy. Um, especially when when you're just getting a fresh cross like this and i think even better seen on perhaps the 12 hour yeah the 12 hour got the, got that 21 and 55 exponential moving average cross right over here a very nasty cross indeed and with the 10 simple getting below all those i would imagine that the next test on the 10 simple is probably gonna be a massive or, or just phenomenal short if if it even does get there um but printing all of these uh all of these kind of long wick dildos over here not necessarily the best sign um but uh, but again, you know, spending too much time around here is you know it's it's just kind of filling this out and really and, and really 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 solidifying the fact that this is all corrective price action. Look at this this very orderly drop off in volume going from left to right. This is how you knew that you know you didn't have a bullish reversal pattern or anything like that. Uh, in over here, this was not I mean not in any way shape or form an inverted head and shoulders right. I mean we've been talking about that for ages, but it's always fun to kind of you know wag the finger and say, okay, come on, come on, crypto Twitter. This is silly. This is getting silly. Um, but hey, you know, someone needs someone needs to buy your shorts, right? And that's that's it's it's an unfortunate reality of the game. Um, but not a zero sum game. So I I because I do have a little blurb about that. Um, it's probably annoying. I'm having like a conversation that doesn't even exist. But hey, uh, for the people who say that trading is a zero sum game, it's actually not. It's actually not, especially when you incorporate or it's, or really only when you incorporate derivative products, which it is in no way, shape, or form a uh, zero sum game. Actually, um, anyways, twelve hour chart over here, kind of telling the story overall. So this is the one that'd be going off of. You got the eighty nine giving you the ultimate rejection at four thousand, and then also not only 
definitely that that was our overall resistance going back all the way from over here which does seem to be our governing factor for this consolidation now remember that we did break this symmetrical triangle to the downside so this would be the more bearish of the scenarios and essentially that we do have a measure move pointing all the way back down to our former lows essentially at around 3250 to 3300 right over here a nice support ledge from here actually so it's beautifully matches up with that the question is do you get a pullback like a legitimate pullback uh, before this guy gets hit um, actually typically no you don't actually typically no you do not and this was a good pattern to be playing again we, we spoke about this very orderly drop off in volume right over here then once you know once a red dildos party begins then you get some nice higher volume dildos or, or higher volume nodes down around here and uh and essentially that is telling me that this is a legitimate pattern that's why i love triangles they seem to actually play out especially in cryptocurrency land uh channels as well are decent not but not as good but we actually funnily enough we actually did have a channel right over here there was not only just a symmetrical triangle but a but a, a rising channel which typically is a bearishly resolved uh pattern and um yeah, it, bo both of these actually do have the same sort of, uh, what's it called, um, uh, measure move as well. So they'd both be pointing down around here. But anyways, um, you know, let's just kind of uh, negate, or sorry, let's just talk about the lower time frames before we move on. And essentially that, uh, you know, when you look at this guy right over here, this is, you know, this is kind of a bear flag that we're looking at right now. If this does break out to the downside, where does this leave us around? Well, right around here, right around 30, uh, 34.50 ish area. So that would be the more, that would be the more, um, uh, immediate resolution if this guy if this guy breaks down which which it does actually look like it, it wants to um, it looks pretty weak right here um, but uh, but hey if things did break back above here of course there's always two ways but as long as as long as Bitcoin is below this 36 uh, 69 resistance I mean I, I'd, I'd be I'd be definitely leaning to the downside but uh, if it does break back above there where's the next resistance to be aware of well I'd say about right around here right around 30 38 29 now you will notice that there isn't that there is a level around 3750 uh, as well i would agree with that but this is the next level that would actually like change things right because look at this when we actually do a a, a bullish fibonacci retracement on this uh, going from basically the, this this last like up leg uh we are resting on the 618 right now and a lot of the times you know bots and algorithms will buy this just by the nature of their programming that was kind of the reason for the bounce over here you buy the 618 then you sell the 236 beautifully done now what a lot of the time will happen doesn't mean it's going to happen but a lot of the time what what will happen is now you'll buy the 618 and then sell the 382 but got to get through this 0.5 first right and that's where that's essentially where our next resistance is in fact if i just adjust this a little bit you know it'd be it'd be right around there and it actually does meet, uh, match up with some nice uh exponentials on i believe this is the four hour yeah so i would like that for good confluence so perhaps i'd actually more appropriately go with this area at 3700 even or, or 3692 we'll call it um so again, you know, though the uh, those are kind of the way forwards that I see, um, and, and this just offers up a lot of different trade opportunities. Again, no trade is like a 100% thing. It's it's about risk and reward and statistical uh, setup. So you know, if Bitcoin did pop back around here first, I'd actually sell this, and then if it takes it out, then I'd then I'd buy it back. Take you know, take like the ten dollar loss, whatever it is. Try another trade right over here, thirty eight fifty, same sort of thing. If it breaks above there probably something different is going on but you'd still have this ascending trend line right over here which is governing our lower highs again lower highs nothing's changed in the last over a year now so you know just more more and more and more of that just like my hair it doesn't change just gets worse so again you know when, when looking at this guy i would be look you know that's going to come into play as as long as bitcoin's kind of you know stuck in the mud in this range which i do actually think is quite likely because while this measure move does point all the way down to 3250 which actually does match up with our weekly 200 simple moving average right over here if i can put it on let's put her on and see what she says does she come in right right in around 3250 oh my god she does it's like magic sometimes technical analysis is actually right sometimes it actually works and it does have good confluence and yeah that is, this is gonna be one of those times um <laughs> anyways um Looking at this guy right over here, you know, I I, I want to make a relation between this this massive 200 simple moving average, which is what did buoy this up on the first uh, pass, um, and also that support trend line that we just were looking at at that lower area, as well as the measure move and confluence with this area as well. And also, it's going to be the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here. So a lot of things coming into play around this area. If Bitcoin, if and when Bitcoin does get down to 3250, I would certainly be closing shorts. I do not want to have the directional trade on looking for the next leg down. 
and yes, I do believe that Bitcoin is very, very strongly moves lower than this 3200 or sorry, 3150 uh, low right now. Um, but I think it's going to take a lot of time. And I think you're going to likely get something similar to what you got at 6000, where you essentially make, well, what is this over here? An ascending triangle if you just, you know, extend this guy out. So, you know, it, it, you know, it could be like something like this. You bounce off there, you know, make another run for it, then boom, 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 something like that. You know, again, you can't you can't tell price action what it's going to do. But we but we know that Bitcoin likes its descending triangles and it actually plays them out. But uh, it, it's it's a very it's it's a very good psychological pattern for getting everyone on the wrong side at the wrong time because everyone gets super bullish. Like, you know, everyone gets super bullish anyways. But uh, but but on the lows right here, more importantly, you get you get a lot of you get you get a lot of people turning bearish and then, you know, po post in the uh oh guys we're going to 2900 like tomorrow it's like no probably not um probably not i mean i think it does happen but it's it's not gonna be tomorrow um but uh but yeah so looking at this guy right over here you know uh, you know it's just it's just it's just a liquidity game when you, you have to be thinking in the minds of the big market movers and uh someone who someone who's dealing with like you know half a billion billion plus you know that those sorts of numbers they can't just enter in at market it doesn't it doesn't you know it doesn't work like that you're gonna move the markets too much you're gonna scare people and you're, you're gonna like quite literally destroy things so you have to like create these ebbs and flows that get everyone you know on the wrong emotional side of these patterns because well that's the one thing that you can really count on is that people you know are almost in, in a very ignorant way in a very uh less sophisticated way not aware of their emotions which this sounds very arrogant of myself to say because it's it's implying that that uh that i'm not i'm not in that group i i am in that group i do have emotions but over the years over plenty of times of getting my own feet burned i've learned to to understand my emotions and then say okay th i'm actually feeling this right now so that's actually a good counter indicator to my own self um and I don't really think that you can ever really get rid of emotions. Again, like maybe if you're some sort of a fucking alien or Martian from a planet down under, or if you're a monk in Tibet who doesn't probably doesn't care about magic and money. But hey, uh, stuff like that is, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's a good marker. Anyways, uh, Intel 3250 actually breaks on like a daily to low time frame. I do not want to be talking about lower, lower targets, although... This is a long term. This is a long term analysis video. So we'll talk about them right now. Actually, if thirty two fifty breaks, which I do believe is very very likely, let's actually sorry. Let's actually talk about first things first. What am I looking for for the for the for the bull market to be over? I want to see three things. Three uh, three things that are very easy to gauge. What first things first? Daily. I want to see a daily little uh, uptrend. That'd be great. You haven't done that in over over. It's not you, but Bitcoin has not done that in over a year. So that would be a good start. But that's not going to get you finished. In fact, that's not even get you most of the way there the next one is quite important though the weekly over here the weekly uh 200 exponential movement average as long as bitcoin is 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 below there i am very bearish and as you can see this has been our governing factor going for going you know for the past what is it couple months um and as long as if bitcoin could both open and close a weekly dollar above there i would immediately change my tune and i'd probably even look for a little bit of a long position like a small one and then the third and final but you're probably going to know beforehand is if bitcoin gets back above the six thousand area right over here that's the area of consolidation for over a year so that kind of denotes your prior phase if you can get back above that phase well you know that just kind of negates it and it's it, I, I would have no reason to be bearish at, at that point in time but for now you can see that all three of those things are far and far away so uh i'm gonna be bearish as fuck then um anyway, anyways uh this area right over here looks uh, extremely similar to this area right over here um again market cycles they're not identical they are like they're like brotherly they they uh, they are brotherly but not identical so when looking at this, it's not right to say, and this is what I hate about the fractal fuckers, because they 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 make it sound like you can just look at this area over here and look at this area over here, and they should act exactly the same. Fuck no, there is variance, there is difference in the market, but the overall feeling and the and the bigger levels and the way that especially that uh, that we relate to the to the higher level uh, uh, moving averages that can be taken into account because basically we're just figuring out what their you know what their algos and what their bots are doing because that's that's what all the market movers do to begin with. I mean, most people use that people act like bots and algorithms are bad it's like no everyone fucking uses one it's just you are unaware of this fact anyways um but we do have a very we do have this very similar stutter step right over here so you have your consolidation right over here you have, you have a consolidation before the ultimate doom drop of about 52 and a half percent well we have our ultimate consolidation right over here before the before the nice doom drop of what is this oh 52 and a half percent not bad interesting how does that work out anyways um then bitcoin uh, sorry once once you hit that doom drop you bounce up about what whoops i uh, got that one wrong 
about 22 22% over here from dildo body to dildo, to, to dildo body, which is the more accurate way to be doing it. And then if we do the same thing right over here, what's this? Well, we're, we're up about 22% off the lows right now. That's interesting as well. Look at the volume characters as well. I want to, I want to relate the volume from the drop over here to, to this guy right over here, your parabolic cycle. That is very similar. And, and just like this guy right over here in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here, everyone thinks that this is a low. Everyone thought that this was the low because it's high volume and that's that's what capitulation means like no that's not even that's not even the bottom of your of your actual down just yet that's that's like a couple of dildos beforehand and then bitcoin just slumped lower as it just floated down to the 200 simple over here just really really weak actually um uh so so yeah not only that but looking at a completely unique indicator over here the mvt signal which again is the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using mm -hmm. forward backward moving average to create a smooth line which again it's not really related to the indicators that we're looking at on price volume and time on the charts uh this is telling you something as well it's telling you that well it's basically tells you all the market tops and all the market bottoms in bitcoin's market cycle history perfectly you'll notice over here in 2014 you know you put in your top where it's above uh where my Chris currently is now, you know, you come back down over here, you don't quite get into the, in, into the, into the bottoming zone, which is where my curse currently is now. Then it pops back up, uh, back under the critical zone, puts in your bull trap right over here. And then you slump down over here and straddle this dotted 100 line right over here. Look at where that is. That is exactly this area right over here. Okay, great. Now let's go over here. Bitcoin comes up for the bull trap right over here above, you know, above this 150 mark, then comes down. And where are we now? We are straddling this dotted trend line over here. So again, these things are completely uh, divorced from each other, but they are agreeing with each other. So I really like that this for good confluence. Not only that, but this is also suggesting that the low is not in, which, you know, again, this we can get into that discussion in a second as well. Um, but any, t you know, once once Bitcoin does put in a major mark cycle top, it typically comes down to where my curse currently is now or a little bit lower. And that's where the bottom is. This this is where major market bottoms are put in. This is where major market tops are put in. So, again, Bitcoin being quite literally right smack dab in the middle, not necessarily the best sign uh, for the low being in. Again, I, I think we've been talking this about this for a while. Uh, as far as capitulation goes, I'm looking for I'm looking for like three or four, four other things that uh, that are important as well. I'll try to. Uh, breeze through them but again volume needs to be similar uh to what you did in your parabolic cycle that's why on your actual capitulation low right over here it's very similar to this guy right over here but again it doesn't need to show up like that actually it really doesn't and this is a big misnomer because people will say crown everyone knows the market cycle cheat sheet now so it can't happen it's like Actually, that's kind of right in a way. That is kind of right in a way. It does, capitulation does not need to happen in this more violent sense over here. It just needs to cause the emotion and the, in the feeling that that aligns with capitu with the capitulation phase, which is a loss of hope, hopelessness, desperation, that sort of thing. And where does that come in around? Well, that comes in around when people are quite literally forced to capitulate for financial reasons. So, so the hodlers, the the hodlers of this market, are the ones who essentially keep it propped up which is good for your bull runs but in your but in your bear markets the purpose of this phase is to shake those people out all of the geniuses who bought bitcoin you know years and years ago uh, and, and they made no sort of amends or may, you know, may, maybe they made some mistakes over the year. Maybe they didn't have any sort of uh, uh, external income or anything like that. And they were completely reliant, reliant on Bitcoin, thinking that could never go down again. Well, those are the people who are who are vulnerable to getting shaken out now because at some point in time, and yes, the very sophisticated uh, algorithms can figure this out, they will feel enough financial pressure to capitulate. How can that happen? Well, it can happen, one, by a very nasty and very violent drop all the way down like this. That's the more violent way then but remember it's an emotional feeling so what else how else could you get that well if bitcoin were to just go sideways for the next like five ten years that would do it as well that would definitely do it so or i, I, would, I would assume that it'd probably do it so again uh some people some people did not like that statement that i made yesterday but it's the truth um it, it's, it's 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 at least what i've experienced myself i've seen it and it's one of those things that you know i'm not i don't say this with like a smile on my face although it can be <laughs> when you get really obnoxious people who are just in some ways rude it can be <laughs> it can be a little bit satisfying if i'm being completely honest however you know again i don't make i don't make fucking money off that so i don't really care um but uh but but overall you know it's one of those things like i would i'd would much rather have this thing be bullish because my life becomes a much easier and then people are just happier because i i think people uh, like just people i don't know pe people just want to hodl and that's 
you know, again, perspective, maybe for some people that's right. I understand that for some people, you, you might have a completely a, a different job and that's the right thing to do because you don't want to spend time trading this and being a complete fucking moron like me who spends 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day on his computer screen. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, and, and, and I understand that's a different perspective. Anyways, um, so the volume's not right. Also, the percentage uh, balance off this area is not right as well. Um, this percentage, as the percentage balance off this off this support so far is just a reactionary balance in the way that I look at it, just like you saw over here. When you get actual capitulation, you're looking for a massive, massive, massive bounce. I mean, over here in 2014, it was about, you know, 69%. You even had it, you even had a good example over here in on that on that massive drop down to 6,000. Uh, which, you know, in, in about a week, you up, what was it, like 40, 50 percent uh, or something like that? Jeez, I can't even get it right. But it, it was about 50 percent right over there. If we go down to lower time frames, uh, you can even see that most of this was done in the span of, you know, less than a day, actually. If we go all the way over here to February 6th, which, again, is it is actually a good example of capitulation. By the way, on the MVT signal, you will see that we did actually get down to this point, to, sorry, to, to this five region over here where markets do uh, put in major lows. Um, but again, going back on over here, is this it? Yeah, yeah, this is it right over here. So these are two hour dildos. So each and every dildo represents two hours worth of price action. Within two hours, you're up 10%. Within you know a day, you're up about 40%. That's literally about almost double than the bounce, uh, than, uh, uh, than the bounce off of 3150 over here done over four weeks. So again, it's a completely different you know uh, feeling of that. Now, of course, we could go, we could go over to 2014 as well. Um, um, but well, let's just fucking do it. Why not? I'm already here. The, by the time I explain this, I'm, I could have already scrolled all the way back. <laughs> just waste, just, just having an argument in my own head. It's like, it's, it's like mental torture, mental masturbation, then mental torture. It's like, it's BDSM with my own mind. It's beautiful, man. It's fucking beautiful. Anyways, uh, let's, we're almost over here. Okay. 2015, I believe it's like January, February of 2015, something like this. Uh, is it this area? No, it's not that area. Um, we're almost there though. Yeah, it's right over here. Nope. Nope. This is not it either. This is it. Here we go. Okay. So this is what capitulation can also look like as well. Each and every one of these dildos represents four hours of price action. You're probably gonna say crown. What the fuck, man? You returned within, within a few percentage points of, of your low over here. Nope. You didn't, you, it was, it was about seven and a half percent up from your lows. Uh, what was this last little wick down around here? Anyways, within about a day, right? Within about a day, you're up almost 50% within, within a week. Um, from, from this wick to this wick over here, 100%. So again, it doesn't need to be the exact sort of same numbers, but it needs to be similar. It needs to have that same sort of similar feeling. And, th and this is gonna be different on different trading assets, but it, you get the same sort of you know workaround with it. So this is why I always say, you know, market cycles, these sorts of things are pretty consistent with the generalities of them across different trading assets. So whether it's magic and money, whether it's Forex, whether it's commodities, or whether it's where I come from in, uh, in equity options, you notice these sorts of similar patterns and they have these, these rhyming characters with each other. So this is Bitcoins right here. And that's essentially why I'm looking for those sorts of things. So yeah. Um, so we talked about that. We talked about the volume. Um, we talked about, we, we talked about the percentage, uh, um, up from there, then also the time spent at the lows, you know, the, the time spent at the lows. Again, big markets do not give you multiple chances to buy the lows, like especially over the course of days. Uh, over here, we spent four days at the low. And as you saw, when those when those other bottoms we were being put in, you spent about literally, you know, less than an hour really putting in a low. And then you don't really return to that, return within like 10% of that area, you know, anytime soon or, or really ever again, if it's gonna be like a true market cycle bottom, but obviously the, the February 6th one was not. Um, so yeah, that is also worth mentioning. Uh, if we bring up uh, another very important thing, um, the... God, this he's gonna he's gonna hate me for doing this because I keep on getting this wrong. But um, let's see, is Bali Poor is over here? Let's be a whoops. Uh, can I do this right? I don't don't think I have his his other one readily available. Why can't I get my hmm? Let's see, historical. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Maybe I can do it like this: historical volatility. Maybe um, where's Bali Poor over here? Yeah, okay, here it is. Nice. Okay, great. Um. Awesome. Okay, so we can actually use the right one. Um, okay, so I'm putting on a, on a daily. Sorry, I need to go to a daily. Let's go to the BLX index. And the other thing that I'm looking for for a major market bottom to be put in on, in on is the volatility to get extremely high. So a lot of people confuse volatility with volume. They're not the same thing. Volatility is basically like 
a measure of a standard deviation away from the mean returns of a price for a given amount of time, which doesn't mean too much. What it what essentially means is higher volatility insinuates that you are that you are that you are at an at, at a crazy inflection point, and so there is a massive trade opportunity to be made. And also, and, and low low volatility, kind of in like extremely low volatility, kind of the same thing for this for the for uh, for the same reason, but the opposite sort of you know indicator. Anyways, when you put in market bottoms and market tops. It's typically done on extremely high volatility. This is this is ancient knowledge from from traditional markets, um, and yes, it does apply to cryptocurrencies. Now you can see over here after a very uh, after a very low period of volatility over here, telling you that you know a big move is likely coming. That was kind of that was kind of the only that's I mean you can use it on these, and that's that would be the way to do it. Um, but uh, you know after that it breaks. Uh, you know we break six thousand over here, and you get massive massive volatility being done on on, on this massive down over here. But without context on this, it doesn't mean too much, right? It got all the way up to not 0.68. And remember, this oscillates between zero and one. So one being the highest, meaning the most potential opportunity, and uh, and zero being nothing. But that also, but I mean, like when you're at zero, it's just likely to go higher, right? Because um, it can't go lower. Anyways, uh, so let's put that into context, right? On the February 6th drop down right over here, how high did this thing get? Well, you can already see it's pretty fucking high. It's, it's around the one. It's around the one mark. So that was a major, major market phase low, which that was kind of the low for a while. Um, when we put in the top of, uh, of 20,000, that was also a major high right over here. When you put in this bottom over here, major volatility being done. When you put in this top over here, major volatility being done. When you put in this top over here, major volatility being done. On the bottom of 2014, you can see over here, major volatility being done. That's essentially what I'm looking for for, uh, for, uh, for the bottom now. High volatility does not, or sorry, like a volatility in the, like in the 0.9 range or higher does not does not guarantee a market cycle bottom or market cycle top, but it does pretty much guarantee a local bottom or local top. <laughs> so I so so again, uh, credit to my man Bali Poor for putting that indicator together. It's very useful. It's very helpful for overall market cycles, um, and something that uh, and something that I'm very grateful for. Anyways, um, let's get on over to our okay. Okay, so so now we talked about why this is what I'm looking for to 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 not be so bearish anymore. What I'm looking for. For the ultimate low. Now let's talk about why. Now let's talk about where I think uh, the next the the other uh, low could be. Okay. So again, this this idea is not applicable. Just like you know, tr you know, looking at this area over here and looking and, and saying that six thousand is likely to break, but not taking the trade until it actually you know gives you the signal. Well, the signal for this one would be thirty two fifty break, and if that happens, then this next blue box territory right over here does become where I look towards, right around the two the twenty three to twenty three hundred number to twenty six hundred number right over here. That's the eight eight six Fibonacci retracement, which is actually which is actually where you did bottom out in twenty in twenty fourteen right over here. Um, it would also be some nice higher volume. Uh, nodes on our volume profile, uh, as demo uh, as denoted by this guy right over here, which is actually bigger than anything we've done this past year. Um, just making sure that my mic is working good, and as you can see, some nice historical uh, horizontal trend lines right over there. And if we go over here to the BLX index, then you will see on the weekly that the 377 exponential, this blue line, is actually coming in right around that range as well because it has enough time to actually populate that. So that is that is really really good. That is a major major exponential in traditional markets, which I'm curious to see. If if it actually does start to get play in uh, in crypto land, um, going on going on here now. Anyways, not only that, but we also do have remember this uh, this potential descending triangle over here, which I'm making some assumptions on. But if this does play out out as a descending triangle, then you can make a measure move on this um, just like you did on the last one. And if you point that all the way down over here, where would this point down around, would this perhaps line up with something else that we've been looking at? And oh my God, yes, 2300 right over here. So again, um, many many things pointing down around that region, but that. It doesn't mean that that has to be the actual low. In fact, there's a couple other regions um, that uh, that I have my eyes on because, again, the way that I do technical analysis, I'm never going to say this area definitely going to be the low. You can't do that. It's it's a game of basically when the big market mover wants to come in and put in a bottom. Who uh, you know he's going to have extremely deep pockets. He's not going to do it when everyone's looking at it. So mm -hmm. if every, you know, I think probably a lot of people have their eyes on this area. Probably a lot of people have their eyes on 1100, 1300 as popularized by your favorite honey nippled uh, analyst out there um but uh but this 1850 i do this 1850 area right over here i do see in the way so so looking at this guy um i would be thinking to myself uh that actually kind of in a way does have 
do, uh, ju, uh, does have a lot of things you know on its side um so 1850 gonna be another area to chew through if that area fails and yes then i can jump on the train with the ultimate per perma bears down around here around 1100 to 1300 um so now we'll do something that, you know, again, I am overall bullish on Bitcoin, like long term, but that's going to, you know, it's going to likely take a long time. Anyways, we'll go through the matrix over here. Um, each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a, uh, a, a support trend line in Bitcoin's market cycle history. So let's do a little bit of mental masturbation with each other. This is these are the kind of things that I don't put too much weight on. I definitely don't take trades off them. Um, I do not. I, I, I think they're fun to talk about. That's that's about it. But. But there is something interesting here. Anyways, uh, this dotted trend line over here in 2010, 2011 mark cycle gets broken in 2012. That trend line now becomes your governing factor in 2013 and 2014 right over here. Then you create another support trend line for that next parabolic mark cycle right here, right here. Gets broken in 2015. That becomes a governing factor in your 2017, 2018 mark cycle right over here. Then we created another uh, tr uh, uh, trend line for a parabolic mark cycle that we just played out right over here, right over here. That be we, we have broken that now uh, on that first still down uh breaking below 4000 uh right over here well does that become our governing factor going forwards well could be could be um could be you know if, if we do this and you know if you go all the way over here to like 2022 you know you could actually come up with like perhaps a range uh it's fun to do it's about at a hundred thousand but then again you know for the range of the end of uh this year funnily enough or maybe not funnily enough for most people the high of this would be thirteen thousand, and that that would be the high so it's not i mean remember whenever it hits kind of the top that's you know you're like in topping range just like you were over here 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 um now i have played around with that with an idea that i actually think does kind of make sense based off of some based off of some really historical massive pivot points of where i think the the bottom support could be which also lines up with one of those potential areas the 1850 area um of, of potential bottoms that we just looked at and that would be this dotted trend line right over here so having that guy going going forwards you know maybe we could come up with support you know going going that way as well anyways uh you will notice that on this chart there are a couple of descending trend lines as well these uh these guys right over here this first one right over here and this first one right over here those are related to each other because they hold in that first consolidation before the bull trap of that phase so you so it breaks out of this guy puts in your bull trap right over here breaks out of this guy puts in your bull trap right over here now you'll see on this first guy right over here it actually does come back down and tag this tag this support trend line after breaking out of it and find support on it once and twice and that's your ultimate low and that's kind of what we've done over here we've we found support once do we found do we find support once again down around here well if we can we can actually come up with a date projection then because at this at the 2300 level that would suggest a date of around like like mid mid february or so um at the 1850 level that would suggest a date around you know mid uh april and then you know if we went all the way down to 1100 1200 1300 that would suggest a date of actually uh june middle of june so again you know are there way forwards are there ways to look at this certainly yeah um so just wanted to point that out there. How much weight do I put on it? Once again, though, not too much. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just I, I just want to speak a sec for a second about how you know this is likely to take a long time. Anyways, uh, going back to the lower time frames over here on Bitcoin, let's go check out CME. CME is closed the week at 36.25. I'm gonna guess that price action is probably gonna float around here for a while. You can see that the last tick on CMEs was a massive rejection. That rejection of uh, I don't know, it's like 3,700 on spot. So, so the next trade, in my opinion, I'll probably stay stay flat until this is is looking at where spot opens up in relation to when CMEs open up later tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Which you know, if, if spot is opening up below, then probably gonna be a sell on the gap fill. Spot is opening up. Above above then it's probably gonna be a buy for a little bit of a bounce i'd be much more happier to be a seller just because it's with the overall trend and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend so again i'll, I'll be essentially waiting for that i don't i i think it's unlikely that you get a major move before that happens so it might be another like you know i don't know how many hours of waiting but uh but 6 p.m later tonight uh we'll we'll be opening up so likely to get some action around that time um, depending upon how that you know how that kind of goes anyways gbtc over here as well uh putting in a nice a nice bear flag rising channel uh getting rejected from this four dollars 45 cent area this has been a great leading indicator for the past year giving you a false breakout over here and again the difference between someone being an analyst and someone you know just reading fucking investopedia or someone being an actual trader well you look at the volume characters and this is again still very corrective volume you're having this nice orderly drop off in volume over here this was never a breakout it was just a rejection and it was a failed breakout these are the perfect 
trade things to get the less educated people on the wrong side of the trade and then run it the other way quite quickly. Now you will know, also notice though that there's a massive gap right around this uh, $4.69 region right over here. If uh, GBC does pop back up, that would probably put Bitcoin itself at like 3,800. So. So do be aware of that as uh, that kind of is like a magnet for price action, but the timing of when that every gap gets filled, every gap, every gap in the history of gap has been filled, but the timing of that is, is a variable thing. It could take months. I mean, in some cases I've seen like ones for years, but they do get filled. So yeah, um, let's go check out uh, Ethereum, Mr. Buterall over here. Mr. Buterall looking like a sick puppy as well. Basically, basically putting in a descending triangle right on the support, actually right over here. Uh, maybe best seen on like an hourly. Yeah, yeah, something like this. So support right over here at around one. Well, it's on an hourly. It's going to be right over here, right around 126 and a half and resistance at uh, 128, uh, which everyone gets broken first. Probably going to have some implications. This one has led the led the market up and then also led the market down. And I'd imagine that whichever way that it does break this, it'll probably be the first one to do it and probably be probably be the big signal, um, at least for me. So if it did if it did break out to the upside, I think it's less likely. But if it did, you know, your next big resistance would actually be right over here, right over 130, uh, 132, 133 ish area. Um, and then above there, you'd have this guy. Uh, and then if you did break 126 and a half, well, not too much holding you up from this next support trend line right over here at around 118 and a half. And at that point, I mean, I think this thing comes all the way back down for the full retrace to be quite honest with you, but that's my opinion. That's not technical analysis to be quite clear as well. You have a very beautiful Wyckoff top being put in here, Wyckoff distribution, um, just absolutely, uh, amazing, you know, and this was, this was really the tell for when we were on stream, um, at the 4,000 level, I was like, I think I'll, I think I'll sell a little bit here. I think a lot of people uh, were thinking that probably the same thing. A lot of people reached out to me saying that they took the same trade. So fucking phenomenally done. Well done on you. And, um, you know, this was the canary in the coal mine. So I would, you know, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's got an event coming up. So you're getting an event psychology event mentality with all of the retailers thinking that, you know, a scheduled upgrade changes, changes the world and that no one else knows about except for them. But of course this is public information. So what's really likely to happen? Well, you're probably going to get the same response that you get to most, most events in general, whether it's, you know, getting listed on a new exchange or an announcement of an announcement or just a regular announcement, or if it's, you know, a conference call. Or, or earnings or, or or whatever whatever it might be um, in traditional markets uh, or, or Trump getting on the phone um, <laughs> which is which is absolutely hilarious um, perhaps for not pro probably not for some people though um, but overall you know th those sorts of things have the same sort of reaction because again it's used by the bigger accounts to drive up and play with people's emotions thinking that you know it's a new paradigm baby and you can't go fucking lower bro and then dump it on their face because now you have buyers again remember you have to think from the perspective of the people who actually move this market um, so yeah that's what I'd be looking at right over there uh, pretty pretty bearish even if it popped all the way back up to 144 and a half I'd still like to sell that area um, but uh, again, risk reward trades along there the whole way. Uh, Mr. Ripples over here, Mr. Ripples, uh, I like to cover, but he hasn't really done anything different either. He looks a lot bearish than everything else, I would say. Uh, three day little death cross, still below the 21 exponential moving average pretty fucking bearish. Uh, uh, not not too much holding up from the 28 cent region right over here. And I'd be bearish as long as you're essentially below the 21. I play this to the downside, um, to the to the dark side. Uh, but anyways, uh, speaking of three hour dildo charts right over here, um, sorry, three day dildo charts right over here. Uh, we do have a very nasty M formation. We just solidified this last uh, three day dildo right over here. So looking at this guy, this is typically a bearish. I mean, th this is a bearish pattern. M is for murder and you actually can make a measure move off of it. Let's go to our, let's go to a fresh chart over here. And I'm going to guess that it basically, yeah, it's going to basically be the same one as, uh, as, as a 3,200 ish area. So again, you know, a lot of things just kind of point in the same direction. Um, also on top of that, our three day Stoke, yeah, three day stokes are losing momentum over here. Uh, two day stokes are crossed down and gaining momentum down. So perhaps that does have follow through. In fact, I'd say I might even hazard a ha hazard to say that it's likely to. Uh, two day DMI ADX giving you a full signal now that is above the tw that is almost at the 25 mark, but above 24. So that's pretty good. Um, this is 
<laughs> well, the red dildo party. I might be I might be re reserving my ticket. Um, and then also not only that, but you know we also we also saw this right. You have your two day dildo death cross right over here, the green fifty five purple two hundred right over there. And ever since then, as long as you know the 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 twenty one exponential has been just a great short. As long as you're both opening and closing dildos below there, I'm very very bearish and I'm looking to short that area. In fact, that was also another great impetus for taking that trade at four thousand right over here because this was a rejection of the twenty one and then follow through to the downside. Not only that, but uh, there was um, hidden bearish divergence on the oscillator right over here, making a higher high on the oscillator, lower high on price action in the context of an overall downtrend, likely to have some more follow through as well. So looking at this guy right now, um, you know, I am bearish off this. It's just a question of, okay, do we pop back up to, do we pop back up before, before heading further down? I mean, do, do, does it give you a second chance to, to short, you know, 3,700 or 3,850? I think actually a little bit less likely the more and more that I look at this, but again, I wouldn't be taking any trades until, you know, seven p or sorry, 6 p.m. Eastern time tonight when CME is open. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Um, let's go look at the longs and shorts of it all. Uh, we have 30, almost 32,000 open longs and uh, a little bit above 23,000 open shorts. Uh, uh, 4.69, great number of those shorts are hedged. So we really have about 18 and a half thousand open shorts. And that's very, very bad because when you look at it right over here, shorts, you have to be aware of this, that uh, shorts from a historical sense, whenever you get down into the low 20,000s areas, it actually does match up with the major dumps. This over here, when shorts were at a low, this was your January dump. This was your February dump. This was your dump of early August. This was your break of 6,000 right over here. And I know that we are a little bit higher right now, but could it be that this is another big, you know, another big break? Well, it's... Uh, it's not out of the question, that's for sure. Uh, and longs, by the same token, longs are are at the level where they where, where they typically dump as well. Anytime that it gets gets above this trend line right here, um, it does suggest that there's too many people on the bus, and these actually do match up with massive dumps in Bitcoin's history. So one over here, another one over here, another one over here, another one. This was, I mean, you know, December, and then another one, uh, another one, perhaps right here in the making. So again, uh, looking at these sorts of things, they do matter. They do matter a lot, and I would be, I'm certainly bearish here is it's a question of when when's the next trade so j again just for full uh just for full um disclosure i am pretty much neutral right now on my streamer account uh bought bought this guy at 36 uh, 23 um yesterday so i'm just going to be waiting and uh wait waiting for the real markets to start and i think i covered everything that i want to say let's go over traditional markets just really really quick um traditional markets again looking like they're putting in a little bit of a local top to me but i don't want to be again i it's the same thing as bitcoin i'm bearish on these but it's not necessarily the right time just yet very nice nasty exponential moving average cross over there i mean head and shoulders head and shoulders top you know measure move getting hit basically one to one um so yeah and, and stokes over here actually snaking around quite a bit but uh i'd go for the more traditional traditional sell uh, or, or or be more interested in shorting around the 260 to 261 area I, I feel like i've been so misheard on this one recently um or maybe i'm just <laughs> speaking out of my own mind but hey <laughs> <laughs> for those for those who know they know um but yeah uh overall you know same thing as bitcoin i think that it goes low over time but when does that time happen well i'll be looking you know it's i i want to see 239 break before i get like positional directional bearish or, or and, and i'll take a short maybe at 260 to 261 if it gets there that'd be the more traditional area just easy to manage position right there at the current you know in the lower time frames yeah it does look like it probably is putting a, lo a local top right here uh you see this very orderly drop off in volume as well down around here so it, you know a move is coming um but uh I, I wouldn't put in another run up just to like really punish those over aggressive shorts. Um, so yeah. Okay, I think that covers just about everything that I wanted to say about Bitcoin. Again, going back to the lower time frames right over here. Uh, resistance right over here, 36.75, uh, as long as you're below there. I mean, you haven't done anything different as long as you're above 35.69 right over here. Uh, you haven't really done anything different to the downside, although technically speaking, this has kind of broken the bear flag. I mean, it has broken the bear flag right over here, but it's a weekend bullshit thing. This is where you get your barts. This is where you get, you know, really annoying price action. So I typically don't even trade during weekends. Um, just do analysis and kind of try to live my life. Anyways, I'm going to go eat a shit ton of food. So look forward to see you guys soon. Um, hope everyone has a beautiful rest of your Sunday. Go pray to goat Jesus or whatever Jesus that you prefer, but goat Jesus loves you. All other Jesuses hate you. I'm just, I'm just giving you the message. Don't hate me. Anyways, uh, <laughs> anyway, you guys soon. Take care.